speaks as thus, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed, there about behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when you when when ye was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Hallelujah. And they remembered his words. Amen. This was reading from the book of 24th chapter of Luke. Amen. Down into the second to the eighth verse. Let's say amen for the word of God on today. Amen. amen. How many are excited amen. about resurrection two, 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 Sunday? Two, two. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. He is risen. He is risen. And now you're in the hand of the praise scene. He is risen. Come on, shout. He is risen. Hallelujah. But well, before we go there, we want to take just a couple steps back and praise Jesus for his sacrifice on the cross for us. Can we celebrate that first? Can we celebrate that he died for our sins? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together.
Good night. 
for you today. Let's give uh, the voices a hand praise in your cars. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We honor the Lord today. We'd like to welcome all of you uh, to our Easter service, our drive-by, drive-in service today. Amen. We're coming to magnify and give God praise today. Amen. It is just good to see you even in your cars. Amen. Not being able to worship in uh, the flesh for several weeks just to see you in your cars. It's good. Amen. And we're going to continue this social distancing and going to make sure that we abide by the rules and the laws of the land. Amen. While we praise and magnify our God. Amen. And we give God praise. We give you glory. We give him honor today. 
Today is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Today is not the celebration of his death, but today is the celebration of his resurrection. Amen. He was dead. Amen. But on the third day, he got up. And I don't know one thing about this nation and this world. It may look like it's dead in some situations with this pandemic, but thank God weeping uh, may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. We know that this season is going to be over. You need to get it in your spirit. This season is going to be over. Amen. Praise God. And you need to type that in the comments that this season is going to be over. And I'm going to live through this season. I shall live and not die. Amen. To declare the works of the Lord. And we give God praise. Amen. I want you to know God has more life in you. He has more in life for you. Amen. Praise God. And just keep on living. Stay in your houses and keep on living. Wash your hands and keep on living. Wear your mask and keep on living. Amen. Because God is going to bless us and he is blessing us right now. We have the victory. Amen. We are just glad for you to tune in today. Uh, we're going to go to the word of God. Amen. That is found in the book of Romans. Book of Romans chapter 5. Amen. Romans chapter 5. Uh, and verse... Uh, eight Romans five and eight. I was telling somebody the other day. I said, "Listen, I I like this drive-in service. It's different. Amen. Hey, man, I, I'm the pastor. I want to be in the car and just be able to sit here and look. <laughs> hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Can you think about if you was a kid growing up and you was able to come to church and sit up in your car and just have service? Oh man, that would be fun. Hey, Amen. Praise God." I, I uh, shared with them the other day on our prayer call that it reminded me of my own late mother. Uh, we had a uh, service here on the grounds a few years ago, amen, as we do uh, every summer with the community. We call it our harvest day, and we were out under the tent, and we were praising God, and we were magnifying God, and she just drove up and just drove right up into the service almost with her big Cadillac. <laughs> Didn't get out the car. <laughs> just get out the car, just sat there and enjoyed the service inside our car. I said, now this would be the kind of service she would like about today. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But we're glad for all of you that have come out this Sunday morning to worship with us. Romans chapter eight, uh, chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. Amen. I like that. That uh, verse nine says much more than being now justified by his blood. Amen. We shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, within the Christian community, there are several terms that describe our faith. Some refer to themselves as believers. They will say that I am born again. You know, somebody said, well, I'm a born again Christian. Uh, amen. Uh, often Pentecostal saints and char charismatic Christians refer to themselves as saints. And, and their experience is being saved. Have you ever heard say, are you saved? You know, uh, some folks say, are, are you born again? But we in the Pentecostal group, we generally say, are you saved? In the tradition of the Church of God in Christ, which I'm a part of, and the Pentecostal churches, we historically have always referred to ourselves as being saved. So what does it mean to be saved? Paul says here, that we, he says here in that verse nine, he lets us know that uh, that because of what Christ has done, we have been saved from wrath through him. Amen. 
And so I just want to talk to you for a very few minutes from a strange subject on an Easter Sunday morning, I'm saved. Very strange message. Most people say he got up, he rose, he this. But at the end of the day, he did all of that. But what does it really mean? It means I am saved. So what does it mean to be saved? Yes, amen. I thank God for your amen humps. <laughs> What does it really, what does that exactly mean? And what does that have to do with Easter? Well, I'm glad you asked. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, as I just got through, but God commended his love towards us. Amen. And when did he do it? In that while we were yet sinners. Thank God that God is a God that loved us. He didn't love us when we got right because we couldn't get right without it. He didn't wait to love us when we were lovely, but he loved us when we were in rebellion. He loved us when we were yet sinners. He loved us in our worst state. And that's why it's very important for us to communicate to people today that no matter where you come from, no matter your situation, your circumstance, that God loves you no matter what with an everlasting love. Amen. That's right. That's right. The hump goes right there. He loves you with an everlasting love. You know, some people say, well, pastor, I'll come to church when I get myself together. I'll come to church when, my, when I change this about my life. Oh, well, I'll, I'll come to church when I do this and that. God didn't say any of that. Listen, God is not trying to get you to clean yourself up to come to church because guess what? You can't do it. You just come to him and let him take care of the rest. The Bible says that God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, not after we were saints, but while we were in our sinners, sins, amen, what Christ died for us. Christ died for me. Christ died for you. Christ died for us. Amen. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved. Not we might be saved, but we shall be saved. And so when I say that I am saved, I may not be saying it from the religious standpoint as some people may refer to it. When I say that I'm saved, it means that I am saved from hell. It means that I am saved from wrath. It means that I don't have to worry about going to hell. I don't have to, I know hell is a bad word today. You know, uh, a lot of people don't want to believe that hell exists, but hell exists. Amen. And, and, and you don't want to go there. Amen. And so Jesus made provision so that we don't have to go. Amen. So what, what are you saved from? I'm saved from wrath. I'm saved. So, so it can't be that COVID-19 Amen. Is God's will. It's not that he's putting anything. That would be the wrath of God. God is not doing that. Amen. He has saved us from the wrath. Amen. He didn't put the wrath on us. It ain't the wrath of God. It's not the anger of God. Every time I get a mic or every time I get a chance to scream, I'm going to always continue to hit that point because there's so much misunderstanding and misinformation out there. God's judgment is on the earth. God is judging people. He's killing folks. He's giving them this and that and the other. Absolutely not. He didn't come to give you disease and sickness and, and all of that. He came to save you from the wrath. Yeah, a hump goes right there. He came to save you from the wrath, not to bring wrath on you. Amen. The Bible says, he says here that, that he says Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. So to be saved means that we are saved from the wrath to come. It means that we will not go to hell. It, it, it's, it's a saving from and a saving of. It's a saving from our sins and a, therefore a saving from hell, but also it's a saving of. It's a saving of us. Amen. So how does that relate to Easter? Well, we are here today to celebrate and observe the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. The age-old question becomes, why did he die? Well, he died because of sin. He died because of what? He kept died because of sin. 
man had sin, Adam had sin, and I want you to know that 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 we serve a holy God. We serve a holy God. He is a righteous. He is righteous in every way. And our God hates sin. Amen. God doesn't inspire sin. God doesn't commit sin or commission sin. He doesn't excuse sin. God doesn't overlook sin. God does not look at sin lightly. God does not treat sin lightly. He's not playing with sin. He said the payment of sin is death. Amen. Paul says in Romans 3 and 10, he says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Amen. So basically he said that nobody's righteous. Nobody's righteous of themselves. Nobody's righteous in their own right. The best person in the world still is not righteous. The best uh, person who says, I don't do this, or I do do this, or I don't go here, I don't go there. Uh, amen. Even with all of that, he says, you're still a sinner. You're still not righteous. Amen. And if you're still a sinner, even at your best, even when you are trying to do your best, you're still a sinner, then you got to figure out what in the world can we do? The world did not know what to do because we could not save ourselves. Even the prophet said it like this, Isaiah, in, in Isaiah 64 and 6, he says, but we are all as unclean thing. Amen. We are all as what? Unclean thing. All of us. How many of us? all as unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags we at our best every every person on this earth every person on this earth you at your best without christ is still as filthy as rags your righteousness is still not good enough for this great and holy god Amen. But I thank God. So because we serve a holy God and a righteous God, we need a savior and thus the cross. What, 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 what did God do about our sin? Well, I'm glad you asked. Isaiah tells us what he did about it. Isaiah 53 and 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. What did God do? God sent his son to the earth, amen, to do what we're celebrating today, to die and then to be buried and then to raise, be raised from the dead, to be resurrected from the dead so that our sins could be laid on him. Because remember, we serve a holy God. Remember, we serve a God that does not like sin. We remember, we serve a God that does not play with sin. We remember, we serve a God that does not uh, commission sin. Remember, we serve a God that does not take sin lightly. So because he did not take sin lightly, he came and sent himself to be the sin offering for you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Go on and give him a hunk and a praise for that. He didn't just say, I'm, I'm mad at them and, and, and they're, they're in bad shape, but he sent himself for himself that he might be able to be the salvation for all of us. Paul, uh, Isaiah said it like this again, all like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to his own way. We did our own things. We did the things the way we wanted to do it. And the Lord hath laid on him. And the Lord hath laid on him. And the Lord hath laid on him. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. So what did he do? He took the sins of the entire world and he laid those sins, your sins, my sins, the sins of the whole, the whole world, he laid them on Jesus. Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, he says, for he hath made, he, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Amen. Amen. Who knew no sin, which simply means that 
because we were all sinners, because he doesn't play with sin, because he doesn't like sin, because he doesn't play with sin, none of that. He says Jesus was made sin for us. Amen. Who knew no sin? What does it mean that he was made sin that uh, for us who knew no sin? It means that he was not guilty of sin at all. Amen. He went to the cross not for his own guilt, but he went to the cross for my guilt. He went to the cross for your guilt. He went to the cross for the guilt of the whole world. Yes, he went to the cross for the guilt of the whole world. And the Bible says he was made sin for us who knew no sin. What? that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thank God for what he did for us. He became sin for us that we might be righteous. And I always tell you that is the great exchange. He took my sin and gave me his righteousness. He took my sickness and gave me his healing. He took everything that I had and he gave me life. I have, I was dead trespasses of sin and he gave me life life everlasting and for that we give him praise we give him glory and we give him honor i am saved today anybody saved today all right all right we saved today the cross took care of our sins past present and future you know some folks don't like that statement and it just means that you got a lack of understanding if christ what you know uh, were you there when Jesus was crucified? Were you there 2,000 years ago? That was so past, amen. When he took care of sins in the past, amen, he took care of sins, period. There is no future sin. There is no, none of that. He took care of your sins past, present. There is no time frame that sin is not taken care of. It's taken care of forever, amen. It's a, it's a matter of understanding. Amen. Your sins are taken care of forever. Amen. Because Jesus did it already. It's already done. And it was done back on the cross 2,000 years ago. It's already done. It's already done. So it's past. It's present. And it's future. Because why? It's already done. You can't do something else again that's already been done. And so he says here, he says, so so now if we have to establish man's condition as to why we needed a savior, amen, Romans 3 and 24 says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What does it mean, uh, justified how? He says you were justified freely. We're justified freely. What does that mean? How, how is that done freely? It means freely means without conditions. He did not ask us to give or provide anything. You know, when you come to Christ, you don't have nothing to give him. You know, you, know, uh, you have nothing to offer him. You have nothing that of any worth that is of any value to God. Amen. He has everything to give you. He has everything to bring to your life. He, you were dead and he brings life. Amen. You you were dead in trespasses. You know, even when you say, I'm going to give my life to God. Well, really, you didn't have a life to give him. Amen. He gave you life. You had life. The Bible says that he's the one that gives you life and give it life more abundantly. Glory to God. So you had nothing to give him except to receive. All you had to do is receive what Christ had for us. So when he says he's justified us freely, it means without any conditions. How are we justified? By grace. Amen. The unmerited favor of God, which means it's nothing that we could have done to earn it. Amen. It's because of his love that he just bestowed it upon us. We are justified on legal grounds. For God uh, uh, to be righteous for, for what he has done, there has to be a legal basis. You see, God is a holy and righteous and just God. He didn't just forgive sin, but he dealt with sin upon legal grounds. Verse 25 says, verse 25 of that same chapter says, whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. 
So Paul says here, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. Well, that's not a word that we use that often, but it just simply means that God has come to be the sacrifice. Amen. God came to be the solution for himself. God sent himself to take care of our own sins. Amen. He came to be the sacrifice. He took our plates. Amen. We It's called uh, substitutionary. He, he took your place. He took my place. Amen. And removed the guilt and remitted our sins. Remitted means to, to take away. He remitted our sins. Amen. Because we could not do it for ourselves. We couldn't do it for ourselves, so he did it for us. And the Bible says that he did this through the forbearance of God. What does the word forbearance mean? The word forbearance means through the mercy of God, through the kindness of God, through the long suffering in denying, uh, uh, delaying rightful judgment. Amen. He says because of his forbearance, he delayed judgment. For because of his forbearance, he delayed what could have been ours, but should have been ours. Amen. He delayed it from us through the forbearance of God. We are able to be saved today. Can you say amen? Amen. So Paul, and in my conclusion, Paul established God's conduct as proper. There is a legal basis. Why is this important? It is important because I shared with you that God doesn't overlook sin. Amen. These people say, well, y'all talk about this great. You talk about this grace. You talk about this grace. Amen. You got more faith that people, you know, amen, uh, 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 you know, in this grace than we, than we do in Christ. Amen. Well, I, I, I'll just believe Christ. Amen. I'll believe God's word. Amen. While you believe in sin, you got more faith in sin and I got more faith in grace. You got more faith in sin, that sin is more powerful than anything, and I got more faith in grace. I'm sorry. The Bible lets us know that where sin abounds, grace does much more about. You can't out sin grace. Amen. As you can sin more and more and more, and grace will extend even beyond the sin. You can't out sin grace. Amen. Praise God. You keep on having faith in sin. And I'll keep on having faith in Christ and in grace. Amen. Praise God. Verse, he says here, amen, I'm meddling now. Amen. So verse 26 says, to declare, I say as it at this time, uh, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Romans 8 and 31, and we show enough going home. Romans 8 and 31 says, what shall we say then to these things? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Paul says, listen, if God is for you, listen, if God is for you, I don't care whatever is against you. If God be for you, he's more than the world against you. Amen. In all, he says, and basically that, that if God is for you, in fact, in other words, God had legal grounds and paid the sacrifice and satisfied the penalty. Amen. For our sins. How did he do it? In verse 32, he tells us in verse 32, he that spared not his own son. Amen. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. He justified us not, he justified us by not sparing his own son. Amen. The term God had, had, have, have him over means God gave him over to judgment. God gave Jesus over to judgment that we might be saved. Amen. Aren't you glad about that? I want you to know that I am saved. And if you've got the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you are saved too. The hymnologist puts it this way as I close. I have I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Then the refrain goes like this, saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet. 
and my joy is complete for I am saved, saved, saved. Amen, amen, amen. And because we are saved, as a result, there is now no condemnation, no wrath, no punishment, because it was all poured out on Jesus. Amen. There is no wrath today. Why? Because all the wrath was poured out of Jesus. There is no condemnation today. Why? Because it was all poured out on Jesus. There is no, no judgment today. Why? Because it was all poured out on Jesus. Glory to God. He took our place. And because we are in Christ we have redemption. It's called the great exchange. He took my death. I received his life. He took my sins. I received his righteousness. He took my weakness. I received his strength. He went to hell and I'm going to heaven. Come on, give God a praise. Go and give him a praise today. Hallelujah. Because of what he did when he was on the cross, he says, I am, it is finished. It's done. Amen. It's done today. It is finished. It is done. He saved you to the uttermost. Amen. You are saved completely. You are totally saved. It is finished. And for that, we celebrate him all today. Come on and give God praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise today. Hallelujah. 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 God, we give you glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise today. We give you glory today. We give you honor today. We lift your name today. Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. Not only to die, but on the third day, he was rose, he rose from the dead. And so, Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you because we are saved today. What does that mean? We're saved from hell. We're saved from the wrath to come. We're saved from all of that because of what Christ did. By God, we thank you because you laid your sins. You laid my sins. You laid the sins of the whole world on Jesus Christ that we might be righteous today, that we might be saved today. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you spared not your own son, but through his blood we have the redemption of sin. Father, we give you praise on this Easter Sunday morning. We give you praise on this resurrection day. God, thanking and praising you and glorifying you and giving you all the praise and the glory for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, give him a heart praise. Give him a heart praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Listen, you might not have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ today. You may not be saved today, and we don't want to leave today without offering you Christ on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's a very simple thing to do. In fact, Jesus died for your sins, as I've already said. He's already paid the penalty. He's already paid the price. The Bible says that he has given us the, the ministry of reconciliation. It means that God has given us the ministry to let you know that your guilt, your sins are canceled. Why are they canceled? They're canceled because they were canceled on the cross. They were canceled on the cross 2,000 years ago. All you got to do is believe the gospel. The Bible says if, if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Amen. And if that's you today, listen, pray this prayer with me and you can be saved today. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again for my salvation. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. 
and I'll live for you all the days of my life. I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, listen, send me an inbox message and let me know, Pastor, I prayed the prayer of faith. Amen. And I've received the Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen. And you will now begin a new life in him. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Amen. God bless you. Listen, we thank you for sharing with us today. I'd like to give you an opportunity to share today. If you are here today and you're watching by uh, a vision, by uh, streaming today, amen, we'd love to receive an offering from you today. Amen. You can give three ways, as I've stated before. Uh, of course, we have the Giblify, where you can do it uh, by Giblify. It's Rehoboth World Outreach Center. Amen. And that's the designation of how you receive from uh, that you can make your do your donation or your gift today. But the second way is also through the Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign RWOC2. RWOC2. Amen. And the third way you can give is through by sending it in the mail. Amen. And all of those options are on uh, the, the Rehoboth World Outreach Center. Uh, praise God. The Rehoboth World Outreach Center uh, Facebook page and website. We are so glad for you to be with us today, to share with us. Amen. And we want to bless you in the name of the Lord as you have a wonderful day on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And listen, we're getting ready to get out of here right now. God bless you. God bless you is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's give the Lord a hand praise.